Hey everybody, Michael Crump here yet again talking about all of the latest and the greatest PlayStation 4 homebrew news and much, much more. Today, I want to talk about creating your own PS4 9.00 jailbreak web server with the ESP32 series of boards. And if you don't have an ESP32 board, that's okay. I have a guide for the D1 Mini to also use this as a web host. And then a guide on the Raspberry Pi Zero to not only become a host, but also to emulate the USB part of the jailbreak. With that being said, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so one of the boards that I decided to buy was this one right here. What this board allows you to do is, is that you can create an access point that basically your PlayStation 4 is just going to connect to, and then it's going to serve up the files that typically that you would go to a host to run. So why exactly would you want this? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. The main one being is, is that no internet access is actually required if you build your own. So if you happen to take your PlayStation 4, maybe out into a remote area, like a camping spot or something like that, you could connect to this D1 Mini's Wi-Fi access point and still run your exploit. It would be completely independent of any sort of internet access. The second thing that comes to mind is speed. So this is all being served right off of a local network, which means that you don't have to worry about a host being taken down. Maybe the author decides to shut down the server or maybe there are some additional uh, problems that they may have ran into where they take down the host. And then you're going to need something like this right here. You should have a ton of these already sitting in a drawer somewhere, but these are just USB 2.0 A mail to micro B cables. So this is the same exact cable that you typically use to charge your PlayStation 4, but obviously there's different types of cables there. So there's some USB cables that are primarily just for powering, and then there's others that also are intended to transfer data. You're just going to need one that will at least allow you to transfer data. Okay, so over on the GitHub page, let's scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see that it says that this project is designed for the ESP32 as well as the ESP32 Pro. Now, there is a ton of different models and versions of the ESP board. Make sure you're just getting the ESP32 if you want to follow this method. And also keep in mind with this method is that this is just going to provide a host. This is not going to provide the USB emulation. There is an ESP32-S2, which will allow you to do the emulation. And those ports are a little bit more expensive, but this is kind of a quick and a dirty way to get you a 9.00 server that you can run a jailbreak on. Now, scrolling on down into this, you can see that the author calls that out yet again and also notes that there are these two libraries that you're going to need to add to Arduino. We'll be coming right back to this and I'll be walking you through this part of it. And if you scroll down the page just a bit here, they've already implemented a couple of different pages. The one that we're going to be paying the most attention to, at least at the beginning, is just going to be this admin.html. That's going to allow us to upload the exploit as well as other payloads. Go to where it says code and then download zip file. And then you're going to need the software that comes with the Arduino, which is the Arduino IDE. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see there's a Windows, there's Mac, and then there's obviously Linux. And the last build date here was on the 20th of December, 2021. Click on Windows and then just download. And you'll notice it should start downloading for you. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to Windows Explorer. Okay, in Windows Explorer, I've went ahead and I've extracted both of these files. And we're going to begin by heading on up to where it says the Arduino Nightly Windows. And then we're going to go into Arduino Nightly. And then we're going to just double click on the Arduino.exe. Now, before we begin programming the board, I want to show you what my setup looks like. Okay, so here is my board. And it's simply plugged into my micro USB cable. 
And then that is currently being plugged into my computer. So this obviously gives me the power to run the access point. And I also don't need to actually power this with the PlayStation 4. I can run this anywhere as long as the access point and the PlayStation 4 is close enough together. Okay, before we can begin to program our ESP32 device, we need to make sure that it's set up properly and it has a COM port over in Device Manager. So here I am, I'm in Windows, I just typed in my search box Device Manager and it popped up with this prompt right here. We can see that it does say that the CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller has a warning sign beside it, meaning that it doesn't know what it is and we need to provide it the correct driver. Okay, so let's open up our web browser here and let's just head over to this site right here. This is on Silicon Labs. Again, the link to this will be in the description below. And what we're going to do is we're just going to select the CP210X Universal Windows Driver. So just go ahead and click on that and it should download for you. Okay, so after you download it, go ahead and extract it and you'll have what you see just right here. And this is a list of the files that's needed. There is an x86 as well as there is an x64 in here. But all we're really going to need is going to just be that main folder. So you can just kind of click on this and then control C and then back over here into our device manager. You can right click update driver and then you're going to select browse. And now you're just going to paste in that location hit next and it should find it and it should install the drivers. Okay, it says it successfully updated your drivers and then click close. And now that board will have a comp that is attached to it. In my instance, it's gonna be COM5. Okay, and so after you've loaded up the Arduino IDE, let's head over to where it says file and let's go down to where it says preferences and then down at the bottom, it's going to show additional board manager URL. So I'll provide this into the description below, but this is going to be the JSON file that you're going to want to point to in order to be able to select your ESP32 board. Paste that in here, and then you'd want to press OK, and then go back up to Tools, and then where it says Boards, go to Board Manager, and here is where you'd want to type in something like ESP, and you should see ESP32 listed right here. Go ahead and hit the install button on yours. It's already been installed on my box, so I don't need to do that, but make sure you go ahead and install it on yours. And then once that's complete, you just want to go ahead and you would want to press close. Now go back up to tools and then go down to board, and then go to ESP32 Arduino. And then depending on the board that you got, again, I'm using in just a plain vanilla ESP32 developer board, you'd want to select your proper board. Select that. For the upload speed, I have just have mine set right here at 921600, frequency at 240, flash at 80, and then we have our flash size, and that's just going to be four megabytes. Okay, the rest of these, I left everything at default. The only other option is, is just to make sure you have selected that proper COM port. Again, mine was from Vive, and you can get this directly from your device manager. Now that the device is completely set up, we need to load the program files for the ESP board. So go up to where it says File, Open, and so now you just need to navigate to wherever you extracted the files from GitHub. Now going to go into ESP32 Server 900 Main, and we're going to go into the Server folder here, and then finally we're going to select on the .ino file. And at this point, we can go ahead and verify it, which I'll go ahead and I'll hit the Verify button right now, but this is not going to compile. And the reason that it's not going to compile is, is that we haven't yet added the required libraries 
that was mentioned inside of the GitHub site. Okay, and there it goes. It did fail. Let's go ahead and correct this by putting the proper library in place. Okay, so heading back over to the GitHub, you will see that it does say here is the two libraries that is needed. We're just going to right click and open both of these in a brand new tab. Then we're going to go up to the top. We're going to hit code and then we're going to select download zip. And we need to do the same exact thing right here for the async TCP. So download zip again. And now we have both of these libraries downloaded to our computer. Okay, so once that is all downloaded, over here on my right-hand side, I have the Arduino Nightly, which is where my Arduino.exe lives. This is also where there is a folder in here that's just simply called Libraries, which we'll get to in just a moment. On my left-hand side, you'll see that I have both of the downloaded zip files that we just grabbed, which was the async TCP and then the ESP async web server. Let's go ahead and let's go back over to our Arduino Nightly folder and let's go into Libraries. And let's go ahead and let's take this very first one and let's just extract it right here to the root. And we're going to do that with the other ESP file as well. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go into each of these folders. Just need to remove the dash master that it has as the title of the folder. Once that's complete, we can just simply drag and drop that just into the libraries folder. Make sure you don't put it inside one of the other folders or it'll not work. Let's do the same thing here for the ESP web server. Let's remove the dash master and then let's copy that directly into the libraries folder. There we go. Okay, perfect. So now both of them, they're in this proper folder. Okay, and so you actually do not have to close or restart your Arduino. You can just come right back to where we left off and you can press on the verify button and it should find that library now. Okay, so it says it is compiling the sketch and it is done compiling. Okay, so everything looks good there. It found all the libraries and we have a successful build. So now let's go ahead and press the upload button and let's send this over to our ESP32 device. And one thing to mention is that you can check down at the bottom here. It does say which device that it's currently using, just in case you don't wanna to have to go back up to boards and then look from there. Okay, and now it's going through the process of uploading and it is complete now, perfect. And so before we leave Arduino, there is one thing that we can do to make things a little bit easier, and that is to go ahead and to upload Gold Hand as well as a couple of payloads without having to go to the web administration site of the device. You can actually do that very easy right here within Arduino. Let's go check that out. The first thing that you will need is you will need to go to this site and to click on this zip file. Okay, so I went ahead and I have extracted that file that we just downloaded. We can go ahead and we can go into that folder just to take a peek at it. And so it's simply a .jar file. And if we go over into the tools folder, what we'll need to do is we'll need to go back another layer and we're gonna to need to simply copy and then paste that directly within the tools folder in our Arduino Notly build. So now we can go into that folder, we can go to tool, and then we can see the jar file. And keep in mind that this is the structure that they use. It sounds a little confusing because it's basically tools and then the name of the tool and then another folder, it's just called tool. Okay, and so you will need to close and restart Arduino now. And now you'll be able to do something such as this. You'll be able to go to tools up at the top, and now you'll see an option that says ESP32 sketch data upload. So this is simply looking for the files that's inside of the slash data folder, and it's gonna upload them to your ESP32 device very quickly. Now you could do this through the web administration tool, but let's go ahead and check this out. So we're going to press that button and then down at the bottom it shows connecting 
and there it is riding the files, and we're at 100%. All right, leaving. So that looks very good. Okay, and just to quickly reinforce what I just said, uh, here is the files that we downloaded from GitHub at the very beginning of this video, and you'll note that there is this slash data folder. So if we go into that folder, here are the files. So everything from the app dumper to app to USB, Goldian, as well as history blocker, all of those were already included. And so if you have files that's already contained in the slash data folder and you take that option that we just did, then you'll automatically have those uploaded onto your device instead of going through the web administration portal. Okay, so that looks great. Let's go ahead and switch over to our PS4 and connect to that access point. Okay, back over on our PS4, we're going to go to network. We're going to go set up internet connection. We're going to select Wi-Fi. And I'm going to just simply go down to where it says custom. And PS4 underscore web underscore AP is the device. So we're going to select that one. And we're going to go automatic do not specify, and then manual for the DNS settings. Now, since I've already set this up before, my DNS settings have already been populated. For yours, just make sure your primary and your secondary DNS is just 10.1.1.1. Select Next, Automatic, and then Do Not Use, and then we can just back out of it. Back in our browser. Okay. So that didn't take very long, and now we're at our 9.00 payloads. And I'm just going to select the gold hen. Okay, we're going to insert the USB drive. And okay, that should do it. All right, our system is now jailbroken. We'll just go ahead and verify it by heading up to settings and then back to gold in. For you, you would just need to simply type 10.1.1 dot one slash admin dot html and if we click on file manager you won't see anything in it that's because by default it didn't actually upload any files that's something that we have to do ourselves manually in just a second right now it's just got the base application on it that allows it to run this http server there's also a file uploader which we're about to go and take a look at over on our pc and then there's a few other options to like update the firmware. There's a configuration editor, which you'll probably enjoy simply because you can also change the access point here. You can change the password if you would like to and a few other settings. And then you can also reboot the ESP device completely from your PS4. Okay, let's switch over to our PC again. Okay, so on our PC, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've went ahead and connected to that same access point. Once you've done that, simply head over to 10.1.1.1 slash admin.html file uploader. We're gonna select the files. We're gonna go into the data folder and we're just gonna simply select all of these. Now, the ones that you'll see that is included is obviously gold hen and then there is a app dumper. There is also the app to USB as well as the history blocker. Now, these were just the payloads that the author decided to include. You can obviously switch and swap these out for whatever you're looking to do on your PS4. We're gonna hit open now. Make sure you do hit the upload files button. And if you see this screen, then you know it has worked successfully. Okay, so back over on the PS4, I did click on the file manager again, and now I can start using them directly from my PS4. Okay, so thank you so very much for watching yet again in yet another video. I could not thank you all enough. Do me a favor though, hit the subscribe button. Also, share this video. I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!